In a world that's cushioned and protective, this is a way to experience something raw and unfiltered. In a society that pushes you into eternal busyness, this is a way to disconnect and hear your inner voice. In a life that tends to make you uncomfortably numb, this is a way to feel alive. The adventure begins right here in the town of Arusha here in Tanzania. This place is the gateway to Mount Kilimanjaro and honestly I can't believe I'm here. It's all happened so fast. So just a few months ago I got a message in my DMs from Kili Warrior, um, a company that operates treks to Kilimanjaro that's locally owned here and they invited me to come over and join one of their treks and suddenly I'm here and suddenly tomorrow we start our trek to the top of Africa's tallest mountain. Life, how does that happen? We were due to leave civilization behind for nine days. So the day before our trip, we came out to Arusha Central Market to get some last minute supplies. Some of them were very local. Okay, I'm here with Hosea at the local market in Arusha and we have come to a... To look at the traditional medicine, Masai traditional medicine. I would love to get something to help me climb Kilimanjaro to have energy and strength. So let's ask what they can recommend. We have the ones to regain power. Yeah. Regain power. Tell people to climb Kilimanjaro, climb North Side. Exactly. So what should I take? Yeah, you can take this way. Special for Kilimanjaro. That is a powerful smell. Don't drink it. Like it. Okay, well, let's see if this uh, special local herb helps me climb Kilimanjaro. One of my greatest challenges yet. When the snake bites you? Uh -huh. Didn't think I needed the snake anti-venom, but there was one more essential purchase I definitely had to make. But in addition to the magic route, I think it's just wise to get some uh, more conventional uh, energizer. Kilimanjaro coffee from Tanzania. After our little shopping spree, we rushed back to the hotel to finish packing for our big adventure. Uh, okay, so Mike may have started packing all his stuff already and he did a pretty good job. He did a pretty good job. I think I did a pretty good job. <laughs> Wait, did I do a good job? There's nothing there. It's all still smashed up in your bags. <laughs> right. Uh, I better start packing currently. This is what I call a creative chaos. Ta -da! The most difficult part is I don't actually know where to begin. I share my packing tips as well as my favorite hiking items in another video. You can find the link in the description box. It took a while to arrange it like that, but all the stuff that you see behind me is my entire wardrobe for the next nine days. It's not actually that much, but like, let's face it, I mean, Kilimanjaro is not a place where you're gonna be changing your clothes every single day. So I'm gonna go and pack all of this stuff away into a duffel bag for the porters to pick it up tomorrow morning. All right. Wish me a good last night before the big hike. Here we are at Le Mosho Gate. Behind me you can see the outline of what's coming up over the next few days. I kind of don't want to look at it, but a really, really, really important part of the trek is this one, Uhuru Peak. That is the summit. Uhuru means freedom and it's 48 kilometers away. That's quite far. The guys that you see behind me are part of our team. They're the porters. They're the guys who actually carry all of our supplies, all of our food up the mountain for the next nine days. They are the real heroes. Kilimanjaro gives jobs to thousands of people from the region. Porters, support staff, guides and so on. That's why even if you're strong enough to carry your own gear, it's good form to hire a porter and support the local economy in the process. <laughs> How are you? Good, are you? Good, good, good. Luis, I'm Eva. 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 Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so it's a rule. Uh, and according to the Kilimanjaro Potters Association project, to make sure we weigh all our potters' bag at the starting point. And the maximum is? There should be not more than 20 kilos for every potter. That's it. 
It's really not an easy job to work as a porter, but those who work for outfitters certified by KPAP earn fair wages, sometimes even twice as much as a school teacher in Tanzania. Their strength and tenacity just wowed us every single day for the rest of the trek. Good to go? Good to go, ready? Let's All go right. to Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The very first steps of our Kilimanjaro hike. And behind me is Mike with his watermelon. In order to understand what's happening here, you really have to go and watch his video. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother explaining. <laughs> here we go. Hakuna Matata. Day one, done. This is camp one. Whew, well, I'm gonna get changed, get some water, have some food, and rest. Ready? For tomorrow. So far, one of my favorite things about this hike has been the fact that the landscape changes all the time. So we've just left that beautiful lush rainforest and we're about to enter a much more rugged, rough terrain for the next two days, the moorlands. Oh, sounds mysterious. woken up to well, probably the most beautiful view I've seen in my life outside my tent. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Ah, this is the coffee I got at the market. Today, I'm gonna try this for the first time. This is the Maasai medicine that I bought from, well, the herbal medicine practitioners at the same market. I'm really curious to see what it tastes like, but mostly what it does. <laughs> Whew, it's powerful, it's pretty strong. They said no more than half a teaspoon with your morning coffee and your evening tea. Here it is, morning coffee infused with Maasai medicine. What do you think is going to happen to me? Anything special? Well, you'll turn Maasai, obviously. Obviously. This is meant to make me stronger and give me more energy and immunity for the trek, so cheers. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. No, pretty good. Even if it doesn't give me superpowers, it's tasty, so. If only I had known what would happen later. Every few steps brought us to a higher altitude, and with the altitude, everything around us changed too. The views, the weather, the nature. Jumbo, jumbo. Jumbo. Jumbo, jumbo. Jumbo. Some of the landscapes here are just so stunning. I mean, look at these, this beautiful valley right here, and these rocks behind me. It honestly feels like something from a movie. It's so moody and duh, epic, epic, that's the word. But the more epic the views became, the worse I started to feel. <sighs> I'm really not feeling great today. <sighs> All day today, my body has been trying to flush something out of the system. You know, both ends. Oh, it's pretty bad vomiting just now and well, we're at 4,000 meters, so I really hope it's not altitude sickness. But I think I know what it is. Those herbs that I got at the market, those Maasai herbs, that's what could have caused these side effects. 
And uh, our guides here at Kitty Warrior agree. <laughs> oh my god. How are you feeling? Yes, a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, but all the appetite. Oh, not much. You need maybe to try the food. Mm mm. No. Mm mm. Okay, make sure you done this one. Okay. Thanks, Nina. The guides here have been so, so helpful. <laughs> and since I couldn't stomach that aromatic fragrant rice, they brought me something else, which is just plain bread and peppermint tea, plus a bowl that's outside in case I need to throw up in the middle of the night. And I hope that this is where it ends. I really hope that this is the worst of it and that I wake up tomorrow feeling better because I would be devastated. <laughs> I would be devastated if I had to end this trek at 4,000 meters. The only solution was to rest and hope that I would feel better the next day. Actually, I'm feeling really, really good. I'm feeling super fresh, super light today. I mean, after last night's ordeal, I feel like I'm a newborn. We tested my oxygen levels this morning and they haven't been higher all along this trip. So maybe, maybe there's something in that Masse medicine that actually helped. I don't know. It's hard to put into words just how relieved I was that I could actually continue my journey towards the summit of Africa's tallest mountain. lava tower, formed millions of years ago when Kilimanjaro exploded. I couldn't believe we'd be camping here. In fact, let me show you this camp from up close. All right, the magic tower, oh, it's so warm in here. Oh my God. This is Mama Lu's supermarket. <laughs> Look at all this delicious fresh food. We've got everything to give us energy yeah. for the trek. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone I talked to told me that Mama Luis makes the best food on the mountain. I know, I know, they may be biased, but watching him prepare everything from scratch really made me think that there's some truth to the rumor. There was also something else I was really curious about. Why do they call you Mama Luis? Because I'm cooking. <laughs> like a mama. <laughs> like a mama, yeah. <laughs> Seeing this food being made by Chef Luis makes me so hungry. It smells delicious. It's so aromatic and I'm just I'm just amazed that we're having food this good at four and a half thousand meters in altitude. Amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, the first try of tonight's dinner. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Mm. Who's that? Zanzibar spices. Zanzibar spices? Yeah, special for soup. Oh wow, can I try a little bit? Yeah, that's for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Mmm. Hello. Mmm. <laughs> I'm getting spoiled out here. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side of the kitchen tent... Cheers, <laughs> They should have found one lead seed like now, the leading seed is spade. Spade, let's say. So no matter what color you put, 
the, the spade will be the top number. So then the spades will differ which one is the highest number on the spade. Not sure if I understood all the rules, but Wilbur did warn me that this was a complicated game. <laughs> no, they are forcing us to cheat, they are cheating. They are they are us to Managed by Luis, this kitchen tent is a lot more than just a kitchen. After Mama Luis makes us some delicious food in that tent over there, which he does three times a day, and sometimes we get, even get three courses, can you imagine, at this altitude and in these conditions. We then move into the mess stand. Yeah. <laughs> and here is Kanini. Yeah, I'm Kanini. Who helps us out with all the food every single day. Yes, all yes. All right. Always, yeah. The best food on the mountain. Yes, everything. Nice. And the our spice. Yeah. And Zanzibar spice. Here comes Kanini's famous daily introduction of the dishes. We have uh, spaghetti and uh, cheese and a green banana and a vegetable sauce. Taste test? Oh yeah, always delicious. Thank you, Mama Louise. It's good, whatever. I slept like a baby that night. And we had a pretty amazing surprise awaiting us the next morning. So this is absolutely incredible, the Kili Warrior crew, um, the entire team, they have their own dance, their own songs that they perform on every single trek for extra motivation and inspiration just before the summit and I'm just so excited that we got a chance to witness it, it was so so cool and it makes you feel like you can conquer any mountain, any mountain. Yeah, actually these are the Maasai traditional songs and uh, some are the Swahili songs and all the songs are the solidarity songs of the what you're gonna do and so like keep everybody courage and give everybody power that we can do it. Today we're setting off on our very first proper acclimatization hike. What does that actually mean? That sounds really technical, I know. Basically, being at this altitude is pretty unnatural for the human body. I mean, four and a half thousand meters. So that means that we need to give our bodies a little bit of time to adjust to such an environment so that we don't get headaches, nausea or altitude sickness, which is a really serious problem among mountaineers. So acclimatizing means going up to that ridge. That's where we're going to be going today. A few hundred meters above our current camp position. And then we're going to be coming back down to this camp and sleeping here. Mountaineers often say, hike high, sleep low. It just feels so completely surreal you know we're just standing here tiny little humans on this giant side of the mountain that's covered in snow and rock I can't believe we'll be going even higher even higher than this the next day we hiked back up here and set up this camp hidden under a blanket of white mist nestled among jagged rocks at over four and a half thousand meters in altitude. Summit day was fast approaching and we knew we'd have to scramble up these giant walls in order to get there. This is the night before the big day. 
Tomorrow we wake up at 3 a.m. and we start climbing towards the summit. Tonight, for some reason, I just am so stressed out, so anxious, and I just don't know what to expect of tomorrow's journey. And it feels like a test of some sort, even though I know it's not. It's not. It's a journey. It's part of the process. So I think tonight I just need to, I don't know, figure out why I'm here, what I'm doing here, what this means to me before I try to get to the top. In the meantime, I'm going to try and get some sleep. All right. See you at 3 a.m. Just got woken up. It's 3.15 a.m. Still very much the middle of the night, but we have to get going. Walking up the Western Breach right now in the night so that we get to the top as the sun rises. Right. I think I'm ready. Mike, are you ready? <sighs> so sleepy. <laughs> Top, but we're here and we'll get to the top. I hope. actually can't believe it. I've always wanted to see the shadow of a mountain at sunrise and it's right there. This beautiful perfect triangle reflecting off of the entire horizon. It's just so gorgeous. Oh my god. I can't believe it. exhausted by now. We're at probably five and a half thousand meters if not more. We've been climbing off the western breach for the last six and a half hours and the end is in sight but it's just so freaking cold and I'm so so tired and so hungry. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get to the top. 
make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Well, that's an instant mood booster. <laughs> probably 5,700 or 5,800 meters. This is the final summit push. We're wading in deep, deep snow and hopefully we'll get there in the next half hour mountain committee. Congratulations! Mm. Oh, our lips are so chapped. Mwah. It's like two, two pieces of tree bark. <laughs> we are here. We are here. We have made it after a week of camping, hiking, trekking in the rocks, in the snow, in the wind. On the roof of Africa. And I can't believe I'm finally here. Kilimanjaro. Thank you for letting us be here. This is the most incredible feeling. Woo! <laughs> you know, I always ask myself, why do we go out to places like this? Some of the most remote, coldest spots in the world. Why do we do this to ourselves? We could be sitting comfortably at home warm and cozy and yet here we are <laughs> I think I know why because these places are the ones where feeling comfortably numb is simply not an option mm. these are the places that make us feel raw and fully human and fully alive and I think that's why we come out here and doing that that takes courage because it's easy to never leave our comfort zone but it takes courage to go in pursuit of adventure and to seek our own limits and you know what I always say this and I will always say this the world belongs All right, I'm back in the real world and now Kilimanjaro seems like a distant dream, but what an amazing adventure that was. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about the practical side of climbing Kilimanjaro, I've actually made another separate video to answer all of your most commonly asked questions like, how long does it take? Is it difficult? Do you need to be super fit in order to climb it? Will you get altitude sick? Who did I go with? What's the best route to take? All those questions I answered in a video for my newsletter subscribers. So if you become a newsletter subscriber, you will get access to that very video. More information and all the links are in the description box below. One more big thank you to Killy Warrior for inviting me along on this incredible adventure. And for all those of you watching this video, wishing to go on any adventure of any kind anywhere in the world, just go for it. The world belongs to the brave. And getting out there and adventuring is part of what makes us feel beautiful and alive. All right. 
<laughs> Keep exploring and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah.